In this video, we will try to make sense of what is finite element analysis, FEA, and how it works. SOLIDWORKS simulations use FEA to solve our designs. So knowing a bit of background about FEA will help us understand many of the settings to optimize our results. To do this, please allow me to tell you a story about the progression of the elements from one dimension to three dimensions. And it all started with the classical problem of a beam. A beam is fixed to a wall in one end and there is a force on the other end. Some people came together and made up an equation to find the deflection at the outer end. What the equation looked like is none of our concern for now. So I will just call it the equation. Here is what concerns us though. To be able to calculate the deflection on the outer end, we had to know beforehand what the deflection is on the inner end connected to the wall. In this classical beam case, we knew that the inner end is fixed to a wall, thus there's no deflection or the deflection is zero. With that known to us, we can apply the equation and find the deflection. Now, the question is, what if we want to know the deflection in the middle of the beam? Well, that's simple. We can split the beam into two and redo the whole calculation. We can start with the first half. In one end, we know the deflection is zero, so we can apply the equation to find the deflection at the end of the first half. Then we can move to the second half and apply the same equation. Again, we already know the deflection in one end because we just calculated it. Then the equation will give us the result at the other outer end. What if we want to know the deflection in every quarter of the beam? Then we can simply redo the same procedure the same way, splitting the beam into four parts. We can do the same procedure for every tenth of the beam if needed, every twentieth, and so on. Now let's stop here for a second to name things. We can call all those little beam divisions elements. And at the end of each element, there are points that we can call nodes. This approach we just used or described in analyzing our beam is finite element analysis. It is dividing a structure into smaller, finite number of elements, which we can analyze one at a time, and then putting all those elements together would give us an understanding of the whole structure. Just now, we were looking at a straight beam, which we were able to split into straight little elements of lines and nodes. The next step would be to go into two dimensions. We can call those shells or sheets. So anything that is relatively thin of uniform thickness can be simplified into a shell like a piece of paper. Those also include the common structures of sheet metals. How can we solve for this now? We don't have a super equation for complex looking shapes like that. So to go around this, we can simply split the whole sheet into many nodes and lines. However, now we are working in two dimensions, our elements cannot be small lines. So we can switch the elements into something like a triangle, which is two dimensional. Now we can split our sheet into little triangular elements. Each has three little lines and three nodes. Then again, somewhere in this sheet, we must know the actual solution values because it is fixed or restrained to something else. Then from there, we can solve for each little line and each little element until we can solve for the entire model. The more elements we have, the more accurate our results will be, but also the more calculations we will have to do. At this point, we can jump into three-dimensional objects, which can be complex looking turbines, gears, castings, consumer products, etc. Again, we don't have equations for all kinds of irregular shapes. But that's not a problem because we can just split the whole thing into small elements to 
to end up with a bunch of nodes and lines. Our element shape this time would have to be three-dimensional, like a tetrahedral, which is the shape of elements used in a software like SOLIDWORKS. As always, with one location of the design known to us, we can use the equation to solve what is happening in the next node and move from there to the rest of the model. Again, generally talking, the more elements we have, the more nodes and lines we have, the more accurate our results will be, but also the more work we would have to do to solve the model. And that's about it. This is what finite element analysis is all about. It's basically the idea of splitting any model into smaller elements that we can solve one at a time. Then putting all those elements together can give us a good understanding of what is happening for the whole model. The power of FEA is that it enables us to understand and simulate how a specific design reacts to different conditions regardless of how complex the design is. Also, at the beginning of this video, we gave a bit of focus to analyzing deflections. However, the same approach applies to analyzing and understanding many other parameters like stress distribution, factor of safety distributions, etc. Before we end this video, I have to give a disclaimer, and it's this. Do not take the story we just made here as a fact. Rather, you can take it as a way to simplify our understanding of what finite element analysis is all about. Quick, subscribe and click the bell icon to give Gallon the power to fight for justice.